welcome to The Near Memo, a weekly conversation about search, social, and commerce. What happened, why it matters, and the implications for local. So um, now on to my topic, which is um, about location also and location data. So one of the pieces that was in our short takes list on Wednesday, I think, uh, was from the Shiner on Security uh, blog. And basically, um, it was about the de- de- um, the outing of that uh, Catholic priest who, that was a widely covered story. Um, we, we also wrote about it, who, who was tracked down by a, um, a, a, an investigative Catholic sub-stack popul- uh, pu- uh, publication and they said, we looked at location data and saw that the guy was at these gay bars and at certain private residences. And uh, we infer from that that he's gay. And it was sort of widely decried as an invasion of privacy and so on and so forth. And the piece that that um, that I'm referring to that I link to is, um, uh, you know, this, this security expert who says uh, location data is not anonymous. It cannot be made anonymous. And that sort of runs contrary to the language that all the location intelligence companies that, you know, traffic literally and figuratively in location data say, which is that you can hash or de-identify or anonymize uh, location. And on that basis, um, you know, a lot of companies have justified capturing location in the background or capturing location with limited user consent or no user consent, and then circulating it for targeting and attribution purposes. And if we take seriously this proposition that location data can not, never be anonymized, um, you know, then we're really into this question of how do you, um, what, what I sort of have referred to broadly as the ethics of, of you know, whatever, advertising, targeting, uh, digital advertising, where, where, you know, currently we have Apple on the one hand, which is asking people to opt in to targeting and, and tracking. And then we've got Google, which delayed its implementation of Flock this week to give everybody more time and sort of work out some of the bugs and gain more consensus. And these ID solutions and Flock sort of perpetuate the notion that you don't really have to get consent from people if there's sufficient anonymity in the background or if their individual identity is pr- protected. And my, my view is now you either have to ask affirmatively for consent or you have to tell people what you're doing and you have to make it really easy for them to opt out. No BS, no dark patterns, no hide the ball. And if you don't do that, really you're in an unethical position that should be a smackdown by the FTC. You know, you're, you're really doing something deceptive in the sense of consumer deception. How does all this work, though, assuming at the hardware level that the phone companies continue to sell location data? that is very accurate, very detailed, and very non-anonymous, can't be. So it, there's a software layer where you, they can see that you were using, this priest was using Grinder, I suppose, okay. But you're still, even if you even if you fix the software layer to be ethical and private if you wanted it to be, I don't, you, there's no, there's very little conversation about the role that the cell phone companies are playing in selling the data. That matches up with Particularly this. Particularly when one of them, well, actually, more at least at least two of them, Verizon and AT and T, are also media networks. <laughs> so, right. Well, yeah. so, so I don't know what the current status. I mean, I I know there's been a lot of discussion about them selling data, capturing data, selling data. I don't know what the current status is with each of the companies. I assume they're still doing it to varying degrees. Um, yes, and in fact, this case was, I think, T-Mobile. The priest was T-Mobile, but yeah. data from T-Mobile. But I think they're all doing it. To some well, I, I mean, I think it has to extend to them. I think they, you, you have to if if they're going to collect that data. I mean, they're collecting it by default. But if they're going to do anything with that data, then they have to be explicit with that, and they have to give you the option to say no, you can't transfer that data to anybody. You can use it for your own whatever internal purposes to make sure your networks are working, but you can't use it for targeting or tracking or you can't sell it and make money off of it without giving me at least the option to say no to you at a minimum and preferably to say yes to that and and make it very easy for me to opt out you know i mean the 
the duplicity or the hypocrisy of the of the industry has been this the the the, the ad choices uh kind of uh you know sort of model is like yes of course we give people the ability to take control over their data and um you know then when you click into these banners or these menus it's it's just impossible to actually do anything you know so people wind up not doing that and then they proceed with the fiction that yes everybody has total control it's not true it has to be made easier you know ccpa is a is a is a an example of that nobody's doing it yeah because because it's just too difficult well yeah and to your point i mean it's it's difficult to implement a system for the business uh who who even wants to do do good do well whatever uh by doing well um, it's difficult to implement full consumer tracking, opt out, all of those things. And then when you actually put the cookie banner on all of, all of the top providers, there's, it's a multi-tab process, like which oh my God. you want to allow or not. And it's like, there needs to be, to your point, you know, something much, much more along the lines of Apple's like, here's what they want. Yes or no. Um, yeah. and I think that right there, there needs to be a, um, it needs. I think that we have to get to a point where there's a binary choice presented for all of this stuff, because otherwise, it's it's just too complex for consumers to understand, uh, including savvy customers, savvy consumers like myself. Well, I mean, back to your Facebook point, um, the, you're the, the uh, savvy consumer. Yes, we're. All, we're <laughs> I, I mean, I, just, I like I to think I've viewed my fair share of websites <laughs> in the last fifteen. Years, yes, right? so. exactly. But to, back to your point about Facebook, Mike, uh, I mean, you know, Apple implemented this whole new regime that everybody was, you know, ring, gnashing of teeth and wringing of hands and wailing about and nothing happened. Nothing happened to their revenue at all because they're in this position that they're in. So the, the industry has always been afraid to offer that binary choice and make it easy for people to execute because they're scared to death that people will say no to them. So they so there's this sort of hide the ball thing as uh, on the one hand, and then they pretend to be you know like oh everything is above board and we make it easy for people. And Google is the perfect example of that. You know they they've 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 at once sort of centralized their privacy controls, but at the same time people don't really understand them, and there's still stuff going on that they haven't fully um, you know declared and disclosed. But I I, I mean I think. I made this point to somebody else this week that I don't think consumers want, you know, I always use these examples, uh, Viagra and Christian singles ads. You know, it's like if you completely opt out, you get you get pharmaceutical ads, you get things like Christian singles and gambling ads. And people don't want that. I mean, I think people do actually prefer ads that are, quote unquote, relevant to their interests. And the key to, to getting them to agree to that is to educate them and help them understand and also be trustworthy. You know, say what you're going to do and do what you say you're going to do and don't do something that you uh, shouldn't be doing or that you're not really disclosing. And then we can have some meeting in the middle of all of this stuff. But it's I think we're very far away from that. Yeah, I guess I would say I, there's also the note, like I have I have two different personas, right? I have a personal side and a, and my my job or your, our, our jobs or whatever. And like, I guess I don't, I don't mind the banner ads and the, you know, retargeting and, and that sort of thing from, from companies that are targeting me in my professional role. Right. I don't really care if I see an ad from LinkedIn sales navigator or something. Um, I do actually have a problem if, if, you know, some golf brand is targeting me or whatever, like that actually does feel invasive. It feels far less invasive to me in a, in a business context for whatever reason. So so that's very interesting because really there's nothing different going on there. It's just you're less um, worried about people knowing who you are as a as a business Correct. person than you are as a as a. What do you feel the same way, Mike? I find all ads annoying. I ignore them equally annoying. Though, them. So Christian singles are okay. e equally equally annoying. I don't see there's any difference in Christian signals. Viagra and singles and ads Christian singles use Viagra, so that kind of works. <laughs> no, maybe. No. I don't know. I just, I look, I mean, it's like, you know, as a, ha having a lot of followers on Twitter, I avoided ads on Twitters for years. And it was just about a year ago, they started sticking them in my feed. And it's very annoying. It's like, you know, how fast can I get by them is really what it comes well, to. Well, you know, I, I, I don't like ads either philosophically. And I pay for all the streaming services I can without ads. I pay the premium to get rid of the ads. 
but I don't, I don't, in truth, I don't mind all ads. And, you know, I don't, right. I mean, I took, I, I said no to the Daily Beast's, uh, you know, Apple prompt. And I just now have gambling ads. And when I scroll through those articles, it's, it's ugly. I don't like it. You know, I'd rather have an ad for Hawaii or for, you know, uh, solar panels or whatever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Last month's purchases. Yeah, exactly. whatever, right. right. Well, that's that's a problem. That's a different problem. It's like the the inability to identify when you know you've already bought something. That's totally annoying. E even like at Amazon, when you actually buy right. the damn yeah, that's thing, a, that's a, you're still getting follow up. Well, that's like you know, it, you might like this product that just like the product you just yeah. bought. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, you know, marketers would tell you that's about you know cookies and frequency capping and personal identity. You know, they want your data so that they can not show you those ads. Mm -hmm. You know, which which we would all, I think, I guess, I guess regard as a service. All right. <clears throat> so once again, we come to the end of another satisfying near memo episode. And um, thanks everybody for watching. Any final words for no, you guys? Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see you around the metaverse. Yes, indeed. Where <laughs> there are different versions of us, the evil versions of us exist. <laughs> No, we'll we'll actually get a glimpse of David's private version. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> All right. Okay. Have a good weekend. Thanks for joining David, Mike, and Greg. To stay on top of the latest developments in local, subscribe to our newsletter at nearmedia.co. We'll see you next week.